My name is Cecil, and I'd like to share with you some information on what I'm wearing from head to toe. On my head is a Bentwood visor, and my visor is decorated with beads and sea lion whiskers. For every seal or sea lion I harvest, I will attach one of their whiskers to my hat to show my respect for the animal. Also, beads and feathers were attached to the whiskers, so I don't lose my hat while I'm in my kayak on the water. I have cords of finely worked sinew attached so I can tie it under my chin. My nose and ears are ornamented with dentalium shells. The other folks use bird bones, feathers, beads, or even sea lion whiskers. And if you are wondering if that's a labret or a lip plug in my chin, it is. This labret lets you know what village I belong to. I'm in a rain parka stitched of horizontally sewn strips of bear intestine. Although you could use seal, whale, or sea lion. The strips are sewn with a waterproof stitch. There's a peach of, piece of beach grass included in the stitch. The grass expands when wet, really making my parka waterproof. And did you think they harvested bear intestine in spring instead of fall? You're right, because whew, in the fall, the bear intestines are full of holes from the sharp bones of salmon that the bears have been eating. Wouldn't make a very good waterproof garment now, would it? Yeah, I'll tell you, this parka provided the best grip protection from rain and cold, especially when hunting on the ocean. I tie the bottom of my gut parka around the hatch covering to seal the vessel against the waves. It's awesome. I read this expert out, excerpt out of the book, uh, Inner Skins and Outer Skins, Gut and Fish Skin. Here you go. The snow is blowing, the seas are rough, and you're getting cold. If you have a rubber raincoat, you're gonna freeze to death. But if you have this one, this gut parka, you're gonna last a little bit longer because it's going to keep you warm. The guts are more breathable than modern materials and they don't freeze or crack. My mittens are made of salmon skin, which are also sewn with a waterproof stitch. Now, I'd like to introduce you to my friend, Exenia. Exenia, Exenia. Kuyana Ciso and Chamai everyone. My name is Exenia. I am wearing my best, most beautiful parka. The design of this parka represents my people, the Chugat Sukhviat. The main body of the parka is made from sea otter fur. Did you know that there are approximately one million hairs per square inch? Wowza! The fur is known for its thickness and softness. The parka tassels are of dyed skin, sea otter fur, accented with red cloth with white ermine tufts. My people made practical parkas for working in a harsh environment and also the best beautiful parkas to wear at winter ceremonies. These beautiful parkas craftsmanship was a symbol of the respect for the animal that enveloped the clothed person. Men's and women's designs were very similar, loose fitting and without a hood. My mittens, they're made of seal skin and sea otter trim and I'm wearing a headdress. These headdresses were mainly worn at dances and feasts. Do you like my dangling pendants on the sides and the long beaded tails in the back? These beads were traded for sea otter hides. Our hunter would lay a sea otter pelt on a table and put beads to the hide of the sea otter fur. They were paid maybe two or three glass beads per hide. That's why we call them trade beads. So that means that this headdress I'm wearing was traded for at least 20 sea otter hides. I come from a family of great hunters and I'm wearing earrings, which were tied through perforation, sometimes six or eight strands on each ear. See, look. And my tattoos, they were sewn into the skin with a bone needle and soot black and thread. My tattoos were a symbol of a change in my life, of my wealth or status in the village. Come on up here, Galusha. Um, come on up and join us. Me? Don't be shy. Really? Yeah. Oh, okay. Ishu, Exenia. Lach Ishu. My name is Galusha, and I am I, I am the chief of the Eak people from Alleghanic Village. 
I'm wearing a wooden crown with feathers. See, this is quite a celebration, so I thought I would dust it off for the occasion. I usually only wear it when I'm dancing. Should I like bust a move for you all? <laughs> oh, all right, maybe, maybe not. Okay, so I'm also wearing a copper nose ring, and around my neck I have this amulet bag. I have a special jewel inside the bag that was gifted to me by Bill Smith. Oa'ada, Bill Smith, wish you were here. Painted on my amulet bag is the Eak Eye. This symbol has been painted on doors and canoe paddles and totems. I'm wearing what most Eak men wear, and that's a pullover frock. I'm a chief, so mine is decorated along the seam with fringe. <laughs> it's made of de-haired caribou hide, waist length, and sometimes decorated with animal teeth and porcupine quills. Of course, in the winter months, I would wear an inner shirt of seal skin with the fur against the body for warmth. The outer shirt has a hood that's made of eagle skins or swan skins with just the down attached. They are so warm. The very wealthy great hunters or chiefs wear sea otter skins. Seal skin is worn by both the men and women of the EAC. During the summer rainy weather, I wear a bear intestine parka, you know, similar to the Chugach parka, which protects me from the wet, cold weather. I am also wearing beaver fur mittens. My people wear seal skin boots, which come right below the knees. Boots are only worn while traveling or hunting. When we're at home in our village, we walk around barefoot, even in the snow. I'm pretty tough, aren't I? Huh. Well, Sophie would like to tell you these nice, tell you nice people what she has on. Come on, Sophie. Ishu. La Ishu, everyone. My name is Sophie. I am wearing a headband with an eagle feather attached. Pam Smith told me the meaning of my headband, which has white diamonds on a red background. The white diamonds are touching, which is a symbol of we all stand together. I'm wearing dentalium shells on my hair to decorate my braids. My shirt reaches to my knees and I have fringe attached and porcupine quills for decoration. A chief's daughter usually had dentalium shells attached to the hem of the skirt. Both men and women wear pants made of seal skin. They also wear mittens made of muskrats or beavers. Women wear seal skin boots, sometimes bare skin, with the hair turned inside on the sole and the upper part of the boot. It looks similar to the Eskimo boot. The boots of the chiefs are decorated with beads and porcupine quills at the top. I left mine at home today because I am so warm. They also use mountain goat sinew for all of their sewing. Here are some of the tab taboos on sewing clothing amongst the Eak people. Did you know that the women are not allowed to make clothing while their husband was out hunting? And did you know women are also not allowed to wear fresh seal skins? And when it comes to sewing, you never put land and sea animals together into one garment. Well, you want to come on up and say kuyana to everyone? Thank you. My name is Cecil, and I want to say kuyana from the Supiak, from the Alutic, for having you here today. And my name is Galusha, and I want to say Oa'ada from the Eak people to thank you for being here today. And my name is Xenia, and I want to say Kuyana from the Chugach Sukhviat people. And my name is Sophie Awa'ada from the Iak people.